Blender's animation workflow is decent, but it's no secret that it can feel limited compared to tools like Maya or Animbot. That's where Animate Pro comes in. This add-on introduces a whole new workflow with features aimed at simplifying tasks and giving animators more control by providing some of the sweet features from Maya and Animbot, bringing each feature with its own shortcut, which you can customize in the preferences to suit your workflow. However, since it brings a kind of a new workflow, be prepared for a strong learning curve as you adapt to the tools. Since it's an early release, we should be expecting a tutorial to help out, but for now, we will just have to bear with it and explore ourselves. Let's start with something simple but effective. Timeline scrubbing. If you've worked in Blender, you know that moving through the timeline can feel clunky. Dragging the playhead or tapping arrow keys just doesn't cut it for fast-paced adjustments. Animate Pro changes that by introducing a modal scrubbing mode, triggered by holding down a key, which is spacebar by default. What's cool is that this isn't just basic scrubbing. While in this mode, you can jump between keyframes, play animations in reverse, or insert markers, all without moving your mouse away from the viewport, which makes it a lot easier to stay focused on your scene. The fluidity it brings is something that feels like it should have been there all along. Speaking of navigating keyframes, let's move on to a tool that handles them in bulk, the Anim Lattice. If you've ever needed to adjust multiple keyframes at once, you know how tedious it can get. Anim Lattice makes this task much simpler. It allows you to select a group of keyframes in the graph editor and manipulate them with a bounding box, similar to how proportional editing works for meshes. This is particularly useful for retiming an animation or adjusting values across multiple frames. For example, if you've animated a walk cycle but the timing is off, you can quickly stretch or compress the keyframes without messing up their relative relationships. While Blender's graph editor has scaling tools, they don't offer the same level of control or ease of use as Anim Lattice. Timing is everything in animation, and Anim Time Warper is like a timeline-specific version of proportional editing. It lets you place pins on your animation to set as anchors, which you can then use to adjust the spacing of keyframes between them. Say you've animated a punch sequence, but the wind-up feels rushed. You can place pins around the anticipation phase and stretch the timing without disturbing the rest of the animation. It's a simple concept, but extremely effective for experimenting with pacing. I think this will be particularly handy for animators who like to iterate quickly. Of course, timing isn't the only thing animators struggle with. Cleaning up messy curves is another challenge. If you've ever dealt with messy curves in Blender, I guess you'll appreciate AnimSculpt. It brings a brush-like approach to the graph editor, allowing you to smooth, shift, or average out keyframes directly. This tool is a lifesaver when working with motion capture data, which often needs heavy cleanup. You might have a character's arm jittering due to tiny inconsistencies in the data. With AnimSculpt, you can smooth out the curve in seconds. Compared to Blender's built-in tools, which can feel rigid, AnimSculpt offers a more interactive and intuitive experience. And while cleaning up curves is important, sometimes you need to create offsets for more dynamic motion. Anim Offset is perfect for staggered animations, like when you want a character's arms or legs to move slightly out of sync. It lets you offset transforms proportionally without needing extra layers or manually adjusting every keyframe. Blender doesn't have a native way of doing this efficiently, so Anim Offset fills a much needed gap. I believe anyone working on repetitive motions, like walk or run cycles, will find this incredibly useful for adding a more natural feel to their animations. Speaking of tweaks and adjustments, let's look at Anim Nudge for those moments where you just need to fine-tune your timing. Anim Nudge makes it easy to shift keyframes forward or backward by a set number of frames. It's one of those tools that seems minor until you realize how often you need it. For example, if you're syncing a character's lip movements to a dialogue, being able to nudge keyframes without disrupting the rest of your animation is a huge time saver. Once you've cleaned up the timing, you might want to refine poses. For pose-to-pose -pose animation, Animposer simplifies the process of propagating poses. You can copy a pose and paste it across a range of keyframes to match it to specific frames in your animation. Let's say you're working on a waving animation and you want the arm to hold a particular pose for several frames. Instead of duplicating keyframes manually, you can use Animposer to quickly extend the pose. It feels like a more polished way to handle repetitive tasks in pose-based workflows. While Animposer focuses on poses, AnimSlicer deals with adding detail through extra keyframes. Adding extra keyframes to smooth out or step an animation can be tedious. 
but Anim Slicer automates the process. It lets you slice animations based on markers, intervals, or specific criteria, ensuring that curves remain intact. For example, if you're working on a robot animation and want to add keyframes every 10 frames for a more mechanical look, Anim Slicer can handle that in one click. Blender doesn't have anything comparable, making this a standout feature for detailed animations. Of course, not all animations need extra keyframes. Sometimes they need a loop. Creating loops like walk cycles can be tricky. Anim Looper makes it simpler by aligning the first and last keyframes or applying F-curve modifiers to ensure a perfect cycle. While Blender's F-curve tools can do this, Anim Looper simplifies the process and gives you more control over handles and interpolation. If you're animating for games or looping backgrounds, this tool is good to have. Once the loops are set, you might need to shift animations to fit your timeline. Anim Shifter lets you move animations forward or backward in time, either for selected keyframes or the entire scene. It can also add hold frames at the beginning or end to keep the animation consistent. Blender's default graph editor can handle shifts, but Anim Shifter feels more intuitive and precise, especially when working with large projects. After all these tweaks and adjustments, cleanup becomes essential. The cleanup tools automate tasks like removing unnecessary keyframes, flattening redundant curves, and dealing with gimbal lock issues. These are the kinds of things that can take forever to do manually, so having them bundled into a single tool can be a relief. Once everything is cleaned up, you'll want to see how your changes impact motion. In Blender, motion paths are useful but static. You have to refresh them manually. Anime Pro updates motion paths in real time, so you can see changes instantly as you tweak keyframes. This dynamic feedback makes it easier to visualize motion and refine animations without breaking your workflow. Finally, for stylized or 2D inspired looks, Anim Stepper and Camera Stepper add another layer of control. These tools let you bake animations in frame steps like 2s or 3s for a choppier stylized effect. Anim Stepper applies this to objects, while Camera Stepper extends it to cameras, allowing different frame rates for various elements in your scene. Whether you're going for a stop motion vibe or a stylized aesthetic, these tools make it easy to experiment with frame rates non destructively. I hope you guys found this video useful and informative, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. Also, subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.